And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Melody, and this is my dad, Tom. All right, Baldrick's Tomb is a game from Fifth Street Games. Now, Fifth Street Games makes easy games to play. They, they, they make the games, uh, the casual family-style games. And so this is a dungeon crawl for casual people. So we're not expecting anything super heavy or, you know, intricate, but... I really like the artwork on the cover here. Let's hope it carries through. Let's hope the game is fun. We'll take a look. What you're going to do in this game is you're going to be going down through four levels of a dungeon. Each level of a dungeon is the board here. On the side here you'll see this arrow which shows you to go down four. It shows you that the Baldrick's gem here is on the second floor. There's an impending doom track here. And what you'll do each level is you're going to take several of these rubble tokens and they're going to be placed all over the board. You're not supposed to put them next to each other but you just place them out in different locations. And one of them always has to be the exit because you're trying to get it around on level two. One of them will be the, the gem here that people are trying to get. Then players are going to be put onto the board. Players are going to be put on the board and other things are done to the board by using a randomized eight-sided dice system where you roll two dice. And the red one is first and the second one and the blue one is second. So that's 46. So that means if I was putting characters at the beginning of the game, I would put a character here on 46 and you would roll to place the different characters all over the board. One person is chosen to go first and each player is given their own player board. Now players have a board here which keeps track of their hit points and a poison counter. Hit points make you go down, poison counters will sometimes come up. If they meet then you're KO'd and you lose half the gold that you've gotten. Hit points can be healed, the poison counter does not go down. However, once you've been hit and lose half your gold, then you can, uh, uh, you basically respawn and you're at full health. Also, each player is going to start with three random skills that you can use over the course of the game. Uh, they will give you special things, like here you can place a gold on a monster, which if you kill that monster gives you uh, more gold, etc. So players are going to be, one player is going to be chosen to go first, and at the beginning of each of his turns, except for the, the, the first one, you're going to move this impending doom. When this impending doom hits five, anybody who has not found the exit is going to basically lose half their gold because of the, the tunnel has collapsed. So on a player's turn, they can move four spaces. When they hit one of these rebel tokens, they'll turn it over and do whatever that token shows. This one here is a trap. When you do a trap, you will draw the top card from the trap pile and do whatever it says. Like here is the slapper, the scroll, discard a scroll card. Each player will have some scroll cards at the beginning of the game that they can use to do different things. Like this one here adds three to combat rolls. This one here, place a damage token on a monster. This one here, move three extra spaces on your turn. Uh, this trap here is a spring trap, which shoots you somewhere randomly in the dungeon. Uh, this one here, lower your hit point marker two spaces or to one space above your poison marker, whichever comes first. So that's what happens when you land on a trap. Other things that you might find, you might find another scroll. So you would draw the top scroll card. Uh, you might find a healing spring, in which case you can heal your hit points, not your poison again. Sometimes you'll find a monster. Now, when you find a monster, there'll be combat. On level one, there's just level one monsters and you'll add level twos and level threes to the deck as the time goes by. Fighting a monster is a very simple affair. Let's say, for example, oh no, it's a rat. And so I fight the rat. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply gonna roll an eight-sided die. I rolled a five. Five through eight means I do one damage to the rat. The rat has two hit points. So I roll again, and I get a three. The rat does one poison damage to me, and I do one to him. I've killed the rat now because I've hit two hit points and I get two gold for having killed him. However, I will also have to move my poison marker up one. 
And there's different things that the monsters can do. They can, you can, they can hurt you by lowering your hit points. Sometimes the monster will run away and you get no gold. Sometimes the more gold will be added to the monster as time goes by. You can quit fighting the monster anytime you want, but if you do so, you have to pay two gold. Other things that a player might do when they're moving is find treasure. And you simply will take the top treasure card, flip it over, and it will tell you how much gold to take, one to three. At the end of your turn, you'll take any rubble tokens that you discovered that turn, and you will randomly re-roll to put them somewhere else on the board. And again, you are searching all over this board to find the exit. The first person to find the exit has a gold, and you can leave any time you want, which means you're going to get less stuff, but at the same time, you will probably not get hurt if the, when the whole thing collapses. On level two, we have this gem, which is worth five gold, but players can try to steal from each other if you go next to someone else. You basically just have a roll off where you both roll eight sided dice and if you roll higher you will steal it from them. This continues after four levels. Whoever has the most gold is the winner of the game. Now there's other variants and things that you can do. You can all fight against one main bad guy who will show up here, the necromancer. And whenever you find him, you will fight against a necromancer who will run away. You can play a variant that when a necromancer kills you, you turn into a zombie and you will fight against the other players. There's lots of different variants that you can play in this game. You can make it harder, make the four collapse sooner. I actually prefer that because it adds a level of excitement to the game. You can add a curse deck, something else I prefer to play with, that when you have the, the Baldrick's gem, each turn you have to turn over one of these cursed things and it will do something to you. So it's great, it's worth money at the end of the game, but at the same time it's going to cause you damage. There's also a solitaire version where you can basically just see how far down you can just keep going and going and going until you run out of hit points and see what your final score is. And there's other things that you can do, but that's basically the gist of the game. Alright Melody, what did you think of this? I really like this game. Um, I like the one mechanic where once you stepped on something, you rolled the dice to move it, and you rolled the dice to get on the board first. Oh, you know, that is, very few games do that. But it's that 8x8 eight eight roll dice to see where stuff spawns on the board. Mm -hmm. So simple, so easy, and I like how the board had the numbers in red and blue, so you instantly knew where stuff went. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I really like fighting the monsters, which I actually didn't do that much in the game, because I was more focused on getting the money and getting out when the time came. Someone is a chicken, I'm not going to point fingers, but... Could be anybody. Okay, anyway. So you lost. <laughs> the point is not who wins or who loses. Um, the, uh, but it, it, it's kind of like a push your luck thing. You're running around trying to get treasure, trying to fight monsters and, and, get, and get stuff that's good and get to that exit. And you can kind of wait too long and you won't get to the exit in time and lose half your gold. Uh, that's interesting. The monster combat is... Fun. <laughs> fun, and but so just random. You know, you just roll dice and see what happens. So... I think we should make this caveat. This game is completely, uh, not completely random, but very random. You know, you can use your cards and you can, you can do things to make it less so, but it's very light. And normally that would make me like, uh, you know, I don't want to play this, but I don't look at this really as a dungeon crawl. This is like, oh, let's go around the dungeon and find what we can find. Push our luck, boom, go to the next dungeon, boom, 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 go to the next dungeon and laugh at the silly th monsters, laugh at the silly traps and all that stuff. Yeah, and also our favorite card was, um the beast master card when you would like, summon a monster and someone and they had to <laughs> Unless, of course, they beat it, then you kind of just gave them money. Um, but anyway, uh, very light, but very fun. This is a family dungeon crawler. But I think, the, the, I wouldn't even introduce that way. I'm like, oh, this is just a game where you try to get treasure and get out as fast as you can. Silly fun. And it works in that regard. Good production values, too. Of course, we come to expect that from Fifth Street games. So, I mean, for me, this isn't one I would want to play all the time. And I think I, it gears more towards playing with a family, playing with kids, than it would be to playing with my diehard gaming group. But in that respect, I think it aces what it's trying to do. So it's a game I can recommend, Baldrick's Tomb. And you? I liked it. Alrighty. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.
Ding.